Imagine a car that never needs to stop at a gas station, never needs a plug into a charger, and yet it keeps going day after day. When American engineers flew to Africa to see if such a car truly exists, their reaction wasn't a surprise. It was disbelief. What they saw redefined everything they thought they knew about energy, transportation, and the future itself. This isn't science fiction. This is happening right now in Africa. The big arrival. When a team of American automotive experts and engineers landed in Harare, Zimbabwe, they came with more questions than answers. The international headlines had caught their attention. Self-powered car invented in Africa. At first, they dismissed it as exaggerated media buzz. But after private demonstrations and reports that the car had been running continuously without ever visiting a charging station, they had to see it for themselves. Waiting for them was Maxwell Chikambutso, the inventor whose name had become both a beacon of hope and a storm of controversy. First impressions. The vehicle stood gleaming in the sunlight. From the outside, it looked like a sleek electric SUV, modern, stylish, and aerodynamic. But it was what lay beneath the hood that made these engineers skeptical. This car powers itself, Maxwell explained calmly. The Americans exchanged doubtful looks. A car that generates its own electricity? Impossible, they thought. And yet, they were about to witness something they had never seen before. The demonstration. Maxwell handed the keys to one of the engineers. Take it for a drive, he said. The SUV purred to life without a sound. As they accelerated down the open test track, one of the experts immediately pulled out diagnostic equipment to monitor the car's energy systems. What shocked them wasn't just the smooth performance. It was the readings. The energy output was far higher than what the battery capacity should allow, and there was no visible charging source. This defies every known principle of EV engineering, one of the experts whispered. The hidden technology. Maxwell revealed only fragments of the secret a self-sustaining energy system that continuously generates power while the car is in motion and even while it's parked. The Americans had read theories about wireless power transfer, zero-point energy, and advanced magnetic propulsion, but they never thought they'd see anything functional outside a laboratory. And yet, here in Africa, on a sunny afternoon, they were driving it. The reaction, back at the testing grounds, the engineers huddled together, replaying data logs and double-checking every detail. One of them finally spoke. If this technology is real, it changes everything. They didn't just approve the EV. They admitted something groundbreaking. Africa might be leading the next wave of global innovation. But what they didn't know was that Maxwell wasn't stopping at cars. His vision went far beyond transportation. Beyond the car. As the engineers finalized their reports... Maxwell leaned forward with a calm smile. You think this is just about a car, he said, but this is only the beginning. The Americans looked up, puzzled. They had already seen what appeared to be a technological miracle, a self-powered EV. What more could there possibly be? Maxwell tapped on a screen, and a new set of blueprints lit up the room. The aircraft vision. What they saw next left them in silence. It was an aircraft, sleek, futuristic, and powered by the same self-sustaining technology. This, Maxwell explained, is a prototype of an electric jet that requires no external refueling, no fossil fuel, no charging stations. It generates its own power, Madeira. The Americans exchanged uneasy glances. They knew that if such technology were real, it could disrupt not just the auto industry, but aviation, defense, and even global trade routes. One of the engineers finally muttered, If this ever takes off, the entire aerospace industry will be rewritten. The African dream. Maxwell wasn't finished. He pulled up another model. An entire city lit not by a national power grid, but by the same technology embedded in homes, streetlights, and infrastructure. Imagine, he said, an Africa where villages never go dark. Cities where power outages are a thing of the past. This technology isn't just about convenience. It's about independence. The room fell into silence again. For the first time, the Americans realized they weren't simply witnessing a breakthrough invention. They were looking at the foundation of an energy revolution, one that could shift the balance of global power. The silent debate. The engineers began debating quietly among themselves. Some were astonished and hopeful. 
If this is real, it could solve the world's energy crisis. Others were skeptical, warning. But if this challenges trillion-dollar industries, how long before powerful interests try to suppress it? Maxwell listened patiently. He had heard these doubts before. He knew the stakes. Finally, he said something that caught them all off guard. This technology doesn't belong to me. It belongs to humanity. And it will grow whether the world is ready or not. A hidden challenge. But just as the meeting seemed to reach its peak, Maxwell revealed a challenge that made the Americans lean in closer. There's one thing you need to know, he said gravely. Every time this technology has been tested, attempts have been made to silence it. Financial blocks, political interference, even threats. If you choose to support it, you must understand what you are stepping into. The room grew tense. The Americans, who had come simply to test a car, now realized they stood at the edge of something much bigger. A movement that could shake the foundations of the global order. Whispers in the room. The silence in the room was heavy. Each American engineer sat frozen, their thoughts colliding between admiration and fear. One of them finally broke the stillness. If what you're saying is true, then the world isn't just unprepared. It's unwilling. Maxwell nodded slowly. He had lived through years of skepticism, pressure, and attempts to derail his work. But this time felt different. For the first time, men and women trained by some of the world's most advanced institutions were seeing the evidence with their own eyes. And yet, approval from experts wasn't the only battle he had to fight. Data that could not be ignored. The Americans had been running silent scans of every test. Battery levels. Energy flow. Output ratios. Everything. When the final numbers appeared on their laptops, one engineer's jaw tightened. This system isn't just self-sustaining, he whispered. It's over-unity. The word hung in the air. In engineering, over-unity was considered impossible. A system producing more energy than it consumed. For decades, it had been dismissed as pseudoscience. And yet, here in Africa, the impossible was happening before their eyes. Some leaned in closer to confirm the readings, while others pushed back in disbelief. This shouldn't exist, one muttered. But it does, another replied. The unspoken fear. But approval wasn't the issue. Survival was. The Americans knew the weight of this discovery. If they signed off publicly on the technology, it wouldn't just attract global praise. It would attract resistance from oil corporations, electric utility giants, and governments who depended on energy as a tool of power. One engineer spoke cautiously. You need to understand... The moment this leaves Africa and reaches global markets, every eye, friendly or hostile, will be on you. Are you ready for that? Maxwell didn't hesitate. I've been ready my whole life. A secret conversation. Later that evening, as the team gathered in their hotel, they spoke more freely. One engineer, a veteran of the American auto industry, leaned closer to his colleagues. This is bigger than Detroit. Bigger than Tesla. Bigger than anything we've worked on. But if we push this forward, we'll be marked. You know how this goes. They'll come after him and maybe after us. The others stayed quiet. Each of them had seen promising technologies buried before. Inventions bought silence or destroyed before they could disrupt the world's balance. But this time, something felt different. This time, they couldn't deny the truth. A decision brewing. The following morning... The Americans returned to Maxwell's workshop. Their faces were stern, but their eyes carried a new weight. We need time, their lead engineer said carefully. Time to process. Time to decide how far we can stand with you. Maxwell understood. The burden wasn't just as any more. It was theirs, too. But as they prepared to leave, one of the engineers slipped a note into his hand. On it were just three words, handwritten in haste. Shadows moving. Back in the United States, the engineers returned quietly. Their official report was meant to be confidential, but secrets of this magnitude rarely stay hidden. Encrypted emails were sent. Phone calls were made at odd hours. Within weeks, whispers about a self-powered African EV began surfacing in elite circles. Not in the media, but in boardrooms, government agencies, and think tanks. A question rippled across powerful networks. If it's true, how do we control it? The first warning. Meanwhile, in Harare, Maxwell was preparing for his next stage. 
scaling his prototypes. His workshop was alive with activity. New vehicle shells, upgraded energy modules, and a team of young African engineers learning directly under him. But then, an unmarked envelope arrived. Inside was a single sheet of paper. No name. No address. Just five typed words. They know. Move carefully now. Maxwell held the note for a long moment, then quietly folded it into his pocket. It wasn't the first warning he had received. But this one, this one felt closer. America's silent debate. Back in Washington, a closed-door meeting was underway. Representatives from the Department of Energy, top automotive lobbyists, and defense analysts sat around a long table. One man spoke firmly. If Africa controls this, the balance of power shifts. Oil becomes irrelevant. Charging infrastructure becomes obsolete. The dollar's grip on energy weakens. We can't allow that. Another voice countered. Suppressing it may not be possible this time. The data we've seen from our engineers is too clear. If we don't lead with this technology, Africa will. The room split in silence. For the first time, the American establishment realized they were not debating whether the technology was real, but whether the world was ready for it. Africa's next move. Unaware of the storm brewing overseas, Maxwell was already thinking beyond cars and aircraft. He gathered his team late one evening and revealed a new vision, a nationwide pilot program. We start with one city, he explained. A fully self-sustaining grid. Homes, hospitals, transport, everything powered without external fuel or electricity. If one African city can prove this model works, the world will have no choice but to acknowledge it. His team exchanged excited yet nervous glances. They knew such a project would attract international attention, both support and opposition. But they also knew this was bigger than them. The leak. Just days later, while preparations were underway, a global tech news outlet published a story titled, American Experts Secretly Approve Africa's Self-Power Car. The article contained details no journalist should have known, internal data points, energy readings, and even quotes from the engineers themselves. Phones started ringing in Maxwell's workshop. Reporters demanded interviews. Investors made offers. And shadowy figures began asking dangerous questions. The race was no longer about invention. It was now about survival. Global shockwaves. The leak report spread like wildfire. Within hours, social media exploded with debates. News anchors on major American, European, and Asian networks scrambled to explain how an African inventor had achieved the impossible. Some called it a hoax. Others labeled it the dawn of a new era. Oil stocks tumbled overnight, while renewable energy companies surged. The world was shifting in real time. Pressure mounts. Maxwell's phone never stopped ringing. Some voices offered billion-dollar deals, demanding exclusive rights. Others delivered veiled threats, warning him to stop before it was too late. Yet, amid the chaos, something unexpected happened. African nations began reaching out. From Nigeria to South Africa, leaders offered resources, research teams, and land to build as pilot city. For the first time, Africa wasn't waiting for the world approval. It was moving on its own, the pilot city. Months later, construction began on the outskirts of Harare, streetlights that never dimmed. Houses without electricity bills. Buses and cars powered endlessly without charging stations. The city glowed like a beacon in the night, a symbol of a continent refusing to stay in the shadows. People travel from across Africa to witness it, and soon international visitors arrived too. Even the American engineers returned, quietly blending into the crowd. They watched as their earlier doubts dissolved into undeniable proof. One whispered to the other, he actually did it. The turning point. The world could no longer ignore it. What began as a single self-powered car had grown into a living, breathing model of the future. Economists predicted a collapse of traditional energy markets. Scientists began rethinking the laws they once considered unbreakable. But for Maxwell, the triumph wasn't in the global recognition. It was in the children running through the glowing streets at night, shouting with joy in neighborhoods that had once been covered in darkness. The legacy, as the cameras rolled and the world's eyes turned to Africa, Maxwell stood quietly on a rooftop overlooking the city he had helped build. 
He knew challenges would come, resist and sabotage, and attempt to control his work. But he also knew something greater. The seed had already been planted. The world had seen it with their own eyes, and there was no going back. His words echoed in the night sky, soft but resolute. The future of energy belongs to humanity, and humanity will never be the same again.